This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora. Welcome to Friday's Economy Watch, where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston, and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz, and today we leave with news US Treasury yields are now near a 16-year high on fears American interest rates will stay higher for longer. And EU bond yields are moving up too. High interest rates will weigh on asset valuations, especially real estate and commercial real estate in particular. But first, new U.S. jobless claims came in at 212,000 last week, less than the week before and lower than expected. There are now 1.8 million people on these benefits, a 10,000 increase from the prior week. The U.S. Conference Board leading economic index is still pointing to an upcoming decline in near-term American economic activity, but the weight is very much less now in the July survey out today. And the Philadelphia Fed's factory survey in its industrial heartland is pointing to a good pickup in new order levels. It was a sub-index that has been negative for 14 consecutive months, so it's a sharp turnaround. And it wasn't the only improving indicator. Across the Pacific, Japan's exports fell 0.3% in July from a year earlier, the first drop in more than two years reflecting the slowing global economy, including in key trade partner China. But Japanese machinery orders rose slightly in June. Today, all eyes will be on the release of Japan's July CPI. It was running at 3.3% in June, and analysts expect the July increase to come in at about 2.5%. In China, their central bank is trying to force the value of the yuan up as it's under devaluation pressure. It's in a tough spot because it needs to cut local interest rates to support growth, but that would normally depress the currency. But markets aren't buying the moves and have devalued the currency anyway, despite the official fixing indication. The gap between the official rate and the market rate is now its widest in 10 months. But without a better rate, the central bank will have to absorb some very chunky losses. In London and New York, China's major state-owned banks were all seen selling US dollars to buy yuan in an attempt to slow the yuan's depreciation. Though they also trade on their own behalf or execute clients' orders, state banks often act for the central bank when the yuan is under pressure as it is now. And in China itself, investors who put money into a troubled shadow bank said police officers visited their homes and urged them to avoid public protests. The latest sign authorities are worried about unrest as fears grow of financial contagion. And it is increasingly noticeable that the financial media in China are avoiding any coverage of their economic stresses. And because there isn't a lot of good news, their coverage of any economic news has become somewhat trivial. As expected in the Philippines, they have left their official policy interest rate unchanged at 6.25% in their regular review. And overnight, Norway raised its policy rate by 25 basis points from 3.75% to 4%. In Australia, they released their July labour market data. Their jobless rate rose to 3.7% in July from 3.5% in June, above market expectations of a rise to 3.6% and the highest level since April. There are now 541,000 unemployed in Australia, an increase of 35,600 in one month. Employment unexpectedly fell by 14,600 when analysts expected a 15,000 rise. Full-time employment fell by 24,000 while part-time employment rose by almost 10,000. Their participation rate also fell to 66.7%. And freight rates for containerised cargoes rose another 2.3% last week as the upturn gathers pace. Bulk cargo rates turned higher as well. And the US Treasury 10-year yield will start today at 4.31% and up another 4 basis points from yesterday and now at a new 16-year high. And the price of gold will start today at $1,885 an ounce. That's down $13 from yesterday. And oil prices are 50 US cents firmer at just under $80 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is just under $84 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today softish at just on 59.3 US cents and down 10 basis points, and it's lowest since November 2022. Against the Aussie, we're a little firmer at 92.5 Australian cents. Against the euro, we're marginally softer at 54.5 euro cents. That all means our trade weight and index is still at 68.5 and a little change from this time yesterday. And the Bitcoin price is very much lower today and now at $27,929, which down a rather substantial 4.1%. 
Volatility over the past 24 hours has also been moderate at just on plus or minus 2.7%. The latest CFTC survey shows hedge funds and commodity trading advisors ramped up bearish bets on the CME-listed cash-settled Bitcoin futures. And in the UK, PayPal pulled back from allowing crypto purchases via its platform. Neither move improves sentiment for Bitcoin. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again on Monday. 